I'm Dr. Keanu Sai, and I'm a political scientist specializing in international relations and public law, with particular emphasis on the legal and political history of Hawaii. I'm also a plaintiff in a lawsuit against the Obama administration that was filed on June 1, 2010, in Federal District Court in Washington, D.C. In order to better understand the lawsuit and its profound impact today, I've produced short vignettes that cover certain sections of the complaint. This particular presentation covers Perfect Title Company and the federal lawsuit against the Obama administration from 1995 to the present. After the Hawaiian Kino government was illegally overthrown, two executive agreements were entered into between President Cleveland of the United States and Queen Liliuokalani of the Hawaiian Kingdom in 1893. The President entered into these executive agreements under his sole constitutional authority to represent the United States in foreign relations, and neither Congress nor the courts can intervene without violating the separation of powers doctrine, which would be an encroachment upon the executive power. The first agreement, called the Liliuokalani Assignment of Executive Power, binds the U.S. President and his successors in office to administer Hawaiian Kingdom law. The second agreement, called the Restoration Agreement, binds the U.S. President and his successors in office to restore the Hawaiian Kingdom government and for the monarch to grant amnesty to those who committed treason on January 17, 1893. Despite the violation of the terms and conditions of the 1893 executive agreements by every president since President Cleveland, the Hawaiian Kingdom continues to remain an independent and sovereign state under prolonged occupation. The failure of the United States to administer Hawaiian Kingdom law had a direct and profound impact on real estate transactions in the islands that prevented titles from being lawfully conveyed since the overthrow of the Hawaiian Kingdom government was settled by executive agreements in 1893. Section 6 of the Hawaiian Civil Code states that the laws are obligatory upon all persons, whether subjects of this kingdom or citizens or subjects of any foreign state while within the limits of this kingdom, except so far as exception is made by the laws of nations in respect to ambassadors or others. The property of all such persons, while such property is within the territorial jurisdiction of this kingdom, is also subject to the laws. Regarding conveyance of properties, the Civil Code states to entitle any conveyance to be recorded it shall be acknowledged by the party or parties executing the same before the Registrar of Conveyances or his agent or some judge of a court of record or notary public of this kingdom. There is no lawful Registrar of Conveyances, his agent, lawful judges, or notaries today because the United States has failed to administer Hawaiian law and maintain these offices. And the Hawaiian King of Supreme Court in 1884 stated, if a conveyance, whether by deed or mortgage, was not properly acknowledged, it was not entitled to be recorded, and though spread upon the record, it must be treated as a nullity. The U.S. Constitution also states that treaties made under the authority of the United States shall be the supreme law of the land, and that the judges in every state shall be bound thereby. The 1893 executive agreements to administer Hawaiian Kingdom law and to restore the Hawaiian Kingdom government are considered treaties. So all state of Hawaii laws and county ordinances are in violation of the 1893 executive agreement to administer Hawaiian Kingdom law. And under U.S. federal law, it's also in violation of the U.S. Constitution. In order to begin the compliance of Hawaiian Kingdom law, Myself and Donald Lewis sought to establish a business under the 1880 Co-Partnership Statute. The statute states that whenever any two or more persons shall carry on business in this kingdom in co-partnership, it shall be incumbent for such persons to file in the office of the Minister of the Interior, which is the Bureau of Conveyances today, that still exists under the State of Hawaii's Department of Land and Natural Resources. On December 10, 1995, we filed in the Bureau of Conveyances a co-partnership agreement establishing the Perfect Title Company. The partnership agreement stated, stated, The above-mentioned parties have agreed to form a general partnership under the firm name of Perfect Title Company in the business of researching, manufacturing, 
and selling of land title reports. Five days later, on December 15th, we established another co-partnership called the Hawaiian Kingdom Trust Company to serve as an acting government in order to ensure that Perfect Title Company complied with the 1880 co-partnership statute. The trust company later transformed into an acting council of regency whose legal basis was founded upon the common law doctrine of necessity. The partnership, sta uh, partnership agreement stated the Hawaiian Kingdom Trust Company will serve in the capacity of acting for and on behalf of the Hawaiian Kingdom government here and after referred to as the absentee government. On February 14, 1996, the Hawaiian Kingdom Trust Company initiated the process of investigating all land titles in the Hawaiian Islands and designated Perfect Title Company as the investigating entity. The authority to do such a large-scale investigation of land titles was acted upon the vested rights of native tenants that continue to remain as a condition of title under Hawaiian Kingdom law since 1845. After the title has been investigated, the person who claimed ownership was shown how to remedy. Investigations were filed with Perfect Title Company by individuals who were claiming to own their property between February 14, 1996 to February 14, 1998. This newspaper article stated, Perfect Title considers any certificate transferred after the 1893 overthrow of Queen Liliuokalani to be invalid because it passed through individuals or institutions treasonous to the crown. What would consequently be exposed is the impact on the real estate industry. When a person borrows money from a bank, it's called a promissory note. What the bank requires from the borrower is collateral to ensure the repayment of the loan. This is called a mortgage, which is commonly misunderstood to be a loan. But the bank also requires the borrower to purchase title insurance to cover the amount of money borrowed because if it is later found that the borrower does not own the property used as a mortgage, the lender cannot foreclose on the property in case the borrower defaults on the loan. So if the public records reveal that all land title transactions stopped in 1893 and no one can claim to own property, their mortgages are void, rendering the loan unsecured. And the insurance that was required to be purchased by the borrower from the title companies would pay off the loan from the lender. This placed a lot of pressure on the title companies who could not refute Perfect Title's reports. Perfect Title's investigations soon created a firestorm throughout Hawaii and the real estate industry. In particular, one of the newspapers stated, Perfect Title's investigations soon uh, created chaos in Hawaii's real estate industry with its claims that current land titles are no good. The company reaches those conclusions using 19th century Hawaiian Kingdom law, which it says is still in effect, and by searching property records dating to the 1840s. Title Guarantee of Hawaii led a propaganda campaign to smear Perfect Title Company and called for the state of Hawaii to shut down Perfect Title. On September 5, 1997, the company was raided by the Honolulu Police Department's White Collar Crime Unit. The article states, as part of a state criminal investigation, Honolulu Police yesterday morning arrested Donald Lewis, David Keanusai, and a company secretary for investigation of theft, racketeering, and tax evasion. Still, none of the title companies in Hawaii could refute perfect titles, title reports. On December 17, 1997, myself, Donald Lewis, and two clients of Perfect Title were indicted for attempted theft, a Class B felony, alleging Perfect Title attempted to steal property by doing a title search and remedying the title under Hawaiian law with the couple, which was the clients, who thought they owned it. The so-called title was later foreclosed and passed from one couple to another. It was the last couple that claimed to own the land and was the basis of the complaint, which is the indictment. The so-called complainant also worked as an attorney for the state of Hawaii government. The article stated, Perfect Title Company executives Donald Lewis and David Kianusai 
and two other people indicted on theft charges this week can expect to be arrested within days if they don't turn themselves in, the Attorney General's office said today. The theft statute does not include real estate because real property is immovable. It doesn't move. So if it doesn't move, you can't steal or attempt to steal it. According to Cook and Marcus, the subject of theft at common law is personal property. Interest in real property is not included, nor objects attached to the soil, such as trees and crops. But the American Law Institute states that a theft prosecution can be possible, where the criminal actor, having power as a trustee, attorney, or otherwise to dispose of another's real estate, does so to his benefit in violation of his trust. The problem here is that Perfect Title and its client were not trustees or attorneys for the people who were the basis of the indictment. In other words, the indictment was manufactured and intended to smear the reputation of Perfect Title Company and to shut it down. Still, no one could refute Perfect Title's title reports. Donald Lewis was acquitted, and on March 7, 2000, I was convicted along with the two clients of Perfect Title of so-called attempted theft in the first degree. The two clients were also convicted of so-called attempted burglary. The burglary count was also manufactured. The article states, The verdict culminates the state's investigation into the now-defunct company, which stirred widespread anxiety in the real estate industry when it challenged property titles based on the laws of the Hawaiian Kingdom before the 1890 overthrow of Queen Liliuokalani. These outrageous proceedings and ultimate convictions also constitute a war crime, as defined under U.S. federal law. Title 18, Section 2441 of the United States Code defines a war crime as a grave breach of the 1949 Geneva Conventions. Article 147 of the 4th Geneva Convention defines a grave breach as willfully depriving a protected person of the rights of a fair and regular trial. These proceedings were neither fair nor regular. On June 1, 2010, 10 years from the date of the conviction, I filed a federal lawsuit under the Alien Tort Statute against President Obama, Secretary of State Clinton, Secretary of Defense Gates, Admiral Willard of the U.S. Pacific Command, and Governor Lingle for the violation of the 1893 executive agreements that mandated President Cleveland and his successors in office to administer Hawaiian Kingdom law. My conviction is the evidence of the violation. On July 15, 2010, the complaint was amended by removing President Obama from the lawsuit because under U.S. law, the president does not have civil liability while in office. All other defendants remain. The lawsuit not only seeks actual and punitive damages, but also seeks a declaration by the judge to declare that the 1898 Joint Resolution of Annexation is unconstitutional as it, and is in violation of the 1893 Executive Agreements, and as treaties, it is also in violation of the U.S. Constitution. For more information on the federal lawsuit, Psy v. Obama et al., visit www.hawaiiankingdom.org.